Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Our guest in studio is a returning guest. He's here to talk with us about his life and to share some details on his new memoir entitled Bulletproof. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Justin Peck. Thanks again, Neil. Thanks for uh, returning. You are a championship off-road racer. You um, own a race team, and you're also living with bipolar disease. Uh, talk about when you were diagnosed with bipolar disease. What tipped you off that something may have been wrong? Is it something that you noticed, something that loved ones, friends uh, noticed? How did it all come about to where you finally were diagnosed? Well, there was uh, there was a moment in my life, um, you know, roughly eleven, eleven and a half years ago, that that I was kind of at the moment of despair, um, no self-worth having just having a really, really, um, hard six months. And mm-hmm. in my book, I kind of, you know, I, I kind of detail the story just to, you know, a little bit more in depth, but, um, but I tried a, uh, a suicide attempt mm-hmm. and when the, the attempt failed, um, I kind of realized that it was, that I had like that I had to change something. I, there there was no way that I could actually physically live like I was living um, anymore. And so went to the doctor, did a lot of the 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 blood works and the and the the testing and you know stuff like that, and uh, and found out that I suffered from class one bipolar disorder. So is it like class two, three, four, five? Is class one the most severe? Well, I. I guess it's all perspective, right? Mm-hmm. So, uh, so there are there are two classes of bipolar disorder. You know, one and two. Um, if you have a class two bipolar disorder, it is it, it's based on kind of the the length of time that you go through each cycle. So, class two has a shorter cycle period where you can be um, in a depressive state for you know two weeks, three weeks, four weeks. Um, and then you can be in a mania um, cycle for you know roughly about the same time you know between a two week and four week period of time. Mm-hmm. The the class one um, bipolar has it, it's it's a lengthier process. So you can be dep- you can be in a depressive state for six months and mania for six months or even up to a year. I mean I've been I've been in a mania state for you know about a year and three months, mm-hmm. which I'm not gonna lie is probably the best feeling ever, but. Mm-hmm. But typically the people around you can't handle you any longer. So would you say that you're uh, an adrenaline junkie as well as a person with bipolar disorder? Do the two go hand in hand or are they totally separate and never a part of each other? Well, I think that um, I don't know. I don't necessarily know if they go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Um, But one thing about my disorder and just kind of the way that I live is I don't assess risk and I don't assess consequence ah. very well. And so, and you know, I mean, that can be related to, to several other things, but, um, but the adrenaline for me, that's what I thrive on it. I, you know, the, the story that I try to explain to people is, you know, it's like you, you go to your house, it's late at night, you know, it's like midnight, it's quiet, no one's around, you're walking in the door, all the lights are off, it, you know, it's like, and you have this eerie feeling about yourself and you walk around to one of the corners and like one of your kids or a friend or someone yells and scares you to death, right? <laughs> so it's that feeling, it's that like that huge adrenaline dump that that people um, that that you get in that in those type of moments, that's what I crave. I want that. I want that constantly. You, you say you've been racing for upwards going on well, close to thirty years, and you were diagnosed 11, 11 and a half years ago. Yeah. Now you're in a, a community that thrives on adrenaline, on speed, on excitement, on walking away from death, cheating death, as it were. Uh, and you're an off road racer. That I, I think that. You know, from my experience, not being a racer, that might pose some some unique challenges as opposed to a, a closed uh, track environment. What has the racing community said to you in response to finding out about your life and some rele- revelations in your book, Bulletproof, uh, the true story of you as a racing champion battling uh, both battling and celebrating your everyday life with bipolar? I mean, honestly, it's it, it's a little bit of a mix. Um 
you know, there are, there are some people that think, you know, okay, he may be too crazy to go out and drive. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, um, I would say probably 80% of the people kind of celebrate it because to be able to do the sport that we do, there is, uh, you have to be kind of a nut anyway. I mean, if, uh, to put it into a little bit of perspective, I mean, we do 140 miles an hour across the dirt that we're going across bumps that are the size of, of cars. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, it's, we have super high speeds, you know, there's boulders and trees and, and, you know, I mean, you're jumping these trucks 200 feet and you're going, um, you know, it's like Baja 1000 type yeah. stuff. You're from, you're doing 1400 miles. You're in the race car for 36 hours straight. Wow. So, Grueling. so yeah, it's fun though. It's, yeah, it, yeah, it, it's yeah. crazy. You know, when you get out of the race car, you're absolutely smoked, but, but it's, um, but it's it, it's an amazing sport. I love it. How do you manage uh, your life as a race car champion and someone who's um, living with bipolar? How do you how do you juggle the two? And especially if you can be in a in one state or another for upwards of a year and a half. Well, the the, the one thing about the racing for me is on my normal day to day life, I you know I do take vacation. Um, I I'm kind of forced to because if I don't, then you know, I do have a tendency of kind of losing my mind, but, um, but the one thing that is a constant in my life and has been a constant for as long as I've been racing is my helmet. Uh -huh. So the second that I'm able to put that helmet, as soon as it crosses my eyes and I put it on and, you know, do the, the, the chin strap, all of the chaos from the outside world, all of the struggle, all of the depression or the mania or all that, you know, any of this, the, the crazy stuff that goes on, it disappears. It completely goes away. And I'm focused on one task and one task only. And that is, of course, to win the race. And while I have my helmet on, that is that's my peace. That's my serenity. That's my safe space. And so um how I how I kind of uh, go from one point to the other uh, is you know living normal life I can do that, but it's always looking forward to the next race because I know that once I can put the helmet on I'm I'm good. Right. Now you're <laughs> occupying a couple of circuits now you know the race car circuit obviously but the speaking circuit as well. Um, are most of your uh, fans, for lack of a better term, race fans or fans of uh, addiction recovery or fans of folks living with bipolar? Who who is your base in, on the speaking circuit? Well, the base right now is um, it has a mix, of course. I mean, you, you're you're going to get a lot of uh, of different walks of life. Um, you know, I do promote some men mental health um, advocacy and in most of everything that I do. Um, but I also like to promote kind of life coaching, um, and an understanding that people need to be able to relate to stories, um, in a way that can help them. So, so I talk a lot about, you know, my experiences in life, whether it be through race car, um, driving a race car or owning businesses or writing a book. I mean, just, just any of these things, but, but ultimately for me, I can talk about how, how my mental struggles have been. And it's, it's a pretty cool thing to, to have people come up after and say, you know what, I've, I've felt the same way or, or I know someone that, that, kind of, you know, acts the same way that, that you've acted in the past. And so that's always been kind of the goal for me is, is, you know, writing a book, publishing the book, and then being able to speak in a way that can help people understand that mental health is, it's not a bad thing. I mean, it's not, it's no different than cancer or diabetes. You know, cancer and diabetes is, is a physical thing. You know, doctors can see it and, and they, they can have certain treatment for it. Mental disorder, brain disorder, you can't see it. 
Yeah. Now, in, in wrapping up, I've got one final question. Now, your book, Bulletproof, uh, it's the story of you. It's the story of, of how you're continuing to overcome some struggles. In your experience, what would you say was the most difficult, addressing the bipolar or the addiction, or was it pretty much the same as across the board as far as um, learning to cope and manage? You know, I don't. I don't necessarily know if I can say that any of it was was harder than the other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the reason why I say that is because I, looking back now, I don't think any of it was hard. Mm-hmm. And I know, and I know that sounds that that sounds odd, but I've always had this this idea and this concept in my mind of um, you know let's take let's take today March nineteenth of twenty seventeen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if if you take today's date and go 365 days to next year of 2018 are the same struggles that you're going through now going to be as important to you as they are today hmm. and so consider and so i look at that as you know yeah whatever i was going through last year was really really hard at that time but it's different than the struggles that i'm going through today I solved the problems that I went through last year. I fixed them. And we all know that when you when you have a struggle and you and you fix it and you feel like that that it's it's solved, you look back at it and say, you know what, that it wasn't really that bad. Yeah, yeah. Hindsight. And that, hindsight, exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of the way that I look at at my life now is yeah, man, I've went through some horrible times, man. Like I'm not gonna lie. But it's the hindsight that I was able to beat it. I was able to figure it out and, and it's a sense of accomplishment. Well, a great accomplishment, your brand new memoir called Bulletproof. Where can our listeners get a copy? I get it at the website uh, at justinpeck.com. Um, we're also available on Amazon and uh, Kindle and, and, uh, those type of outlets as well. Well, thank you for speaking with us today, Justin. Thank you. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, with Justin Peck, championship off-road racer and author of the brand new memoir entitled Bulletproof. Transcripts and audio of this program are available at hpr.fm, also at healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, listen in, and download on SoundCloud.